so we're going to continue. Thank God for deliverance. Hallelujah. We started deliverance early this day. I said, wow. The, the altar had already started opening up. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we don't put God on a schedule? He puts us on one. Yeah. That's why we're here today. Amen. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> we are trying to put God on a schedule. How can you do that? Glory to God. But yet they try. And they mess up every time. You're going to see a bunch of people who try to put God on a schedule today. That's called bell worship. Them putting God on a schedule. Lord, have mercy. What if God didn't wake you up on schedule? The old folks said, if Jesus didn't wake you up, you'd still be sleeping. Yeah, if he didn't wake y'all up, some of y'all would have missed church today. Yep. But thank God, all night long, God watches over us, right? We in his sleep study, right? He be having us hooked up to his Holy Ghost and making sure we still breathing. Oh, she's not breathing. Put your hand on her. Send breath down to to to, to West Oak Lane. That my, my 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 son is over there. Send breath down to Sheltonham. My son is over there. My daughter is over there. When that breath stop, God kicks in. Is it all right? So I thank God. I thank God for the testimonies. Just listening to all these testimonies just encourage me. Come on now, listening to mom. Talking about God keeping him when she ain't know nothing about him. He said, while we were yet sinners, he died. Some people say, I, 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 I come to church when I get myself together. God died before you got yourself together. As a matter of fact, you can't get yourself together. That's why God died. But, amen, we just want to thank God. Please thank God for everything. Just thank God for his, his deliverance. It's, it's a sad thing to come into the house of the Lord and leave out the same. But when you came in, Minister Annette came in with a different mindset than she did before she sat down. But this is where it's at. And the enemy doesn't want you to say anything. He just wants you to keep your mouth shut so you can suffer. That's what he wants you to do. He don't want you to pray. He wants you to talk about people. I got the report that somebody been talking about me like, like a dog. But you know what? I'm still going to say hallelujah. And if they hungry, I'm going to still feed them. But I don't, I expect those things. I don't care about people talking, people talking, ah, people talking about me. I, I don't care about none of that stuff. As long as the ink is still wet and my name is still in the book of heaven, talk all you want. Hallelujah. My God, as long as my name is still visible. My God, my thing is this. People get so caught up. Oh, no, I don't let the haters get caught up with stuff like that. They talked about Jesus. He had bad press. But he still got on the cross, right? Come on. Don't let, you, don't let your ministry stop because somebody don't like you. If you remnant, it ain't because everybody like you, because everybody didn't like you. <laughs> and everybody shouldn't like you. If everybody like you, what are you doing that they liking you? Who you representing? Because the God I serve, all his, all his apostles and disciples died horrible deaths. What are you doing that everybody liking you? But we just want to just thank the Lord, amen, for this. Let's get ready for the word. Y'all ready for this word? This is Bell Worship Part 6. We've been at this thing, amen, for six settings. And until the Lord tell me to come off of it, I'm not coming off of it. Because long as I see people still bound to the devil, I still got a job to do. Long as I see people still getting brainwashed and, and duped by Satan and his, dece his, de his deception crew, I still got work to do. 
Hey, my water, please. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm getting ready. Give now to God and all of the ministers that we have here to, with us. Let's give our ministers a hand, our ministers and our ministers in training. You know, according to man, this is a new year. According to man. But I still want to know, is the ministers and the ministers in training still on the wall? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, I need, to, I need to stand up. I need to look at you. You know, every now and then, the pastor got to look at you. Sometimes y'all don't be looking right. But I had to stand up. Are y'all still on the wall? Are y'all discouraged? Minister, get up. You're a minister in training. Get up, get up. Are y'all still on the wall? Okay, you can sit down. Amen. Let's give our ministers and ministers in training a hand. Every now and then, I gotta check to see who's on the wall. Get up, deacons. I need to look at you. You know, sometimes mama tell you to stand up. When you come in the house, mama tell you to come here, boy, so she can smell you. Are y'all still on the wall? You slipped off the wall a little bit, but you're getting back up on it? I said, if you can admit that, then, then God can heal your land. See, it takes that kind of ingredients for our land to be healed. You got to first humble yourself. See, there are some people that they don't humble themselves. They don't want the pastor to tell them what to do. So those kind of people, I don't tell what to do. I just let them go ahead. But if, this, if you are a part of this ministry, my voice is going to be connected to your ears and it's going to be well with your soul. And if you're not, find you another voice that you can connect to. But in here is only one way. One vision and one visioneer. Where my is my trustee? Stand up, trustee. Stand up, sir. You still on the wall? Let's give these deacons and trustees a hand, y'all. Get up, mothers. Let me tell you, get up, get up. Let me tell you something. A lot of times you see Sabbath and everything look good, but during the week, everything ain't good. Sometimes you have them ain't good moments. Those ain't good phone calls. But guess what? You're still here. Y'all still on the wall? God knows y'all be on that prayer line tearing it up. We we'll love you. Thank you for being faithful. We love you. Have a seat. Give the mothers a hand. Where are my ushers? Get up, ushers. Jackie's back. The best you they get right now. <laughs> Y'all on the wall? Y'all still ain't going nowhere? You going to bend, but you ain't going to break, right? Amen. Praise God. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. Let's keep our pet elder Keisha in prayer for her body. Let's keep Diamond in prayer. She had to be rushed to the hospital. So let's take a second right now and do pray for her. Father, we pray right now for Diamond, Lord. She's having problem breathing. But Lord, I ask you right now that you would touch her, strengthen her, put their breath back in her body. God, open up them airwaves right now in the name of Yeshua. Send your angels, God. 
Send your angels, God, to open up the airways. Send the air, send your air, nose, and throat, doctor. My God. Lord, so Diamond can breathe. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the testimony. Touch Elder Keisha. Touch her body. Strengthen her so she can be back out with, here with us. We thank you, Lord God. Touch everyone, Lord God, that's going through an ailment. Touch everyone that's going through a family law, members that are lost. Lord God, it seems like they're dying like flies. The enemy's just, just poisoning all of the people. But God, cover our people. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. just want to thank God for all y'all. But I also want to thank God for my, my lovely wife. Amen. <laughs> Baby, are you still standing with me? Amen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make a stand. <laughs> you gonna learn one day, sir. <laughs> you got yeah, you gotta learn one day. Not good. <laughs> Not good to mess when you eat. Lord have mercy. But I love y'all. I love all the leaders that's in this house. I love these musicians that we have here. Amen. On the wall. I'm, I'm, I'm not their pastor, but they are still on the wall. And they still listen. They still treat me like I'm theirs. Amen. They respect me. Amen. I love them. Amen. And I come in here turn, changing no, no, no vision. They, they right in their place doing what God called them to do and they're doing it very effectively and it helps the man of God to be able to preach more when he got sound musicians amen because some musicians are crazy amen but they but these men are sound right amen you know what I'm saying amen Thank God for the assistant pastor of this house that's here. My brother, Elder Chester Davis. We in man's new year, so I have to just check to make sure we all intact. I'll check back in April when the real new year comes. <laughs> Everybody that's a member of Verity, raise your hand. Are y'all still standing? Yes. Give yourselves a hand then. <laughs> Praise God. Give a hand for our youth department. Our youth department is growing, y'all. We got enough to break up the ages. We just ain't got enough room to break them up yet. But when we get over to the other building, we're going to have a youth class, a teen class, a young adult class. And we got to raise them up in the way that they should go so they will not depart when they get older. We know we're going to stray. But that word should bring them back. <laughs> My God. I'm good ready. We're good ready to do the word, but I want one more group to stand up real quick. All the married couples stand up. Look at look at this. Look at look at come on, don't get don't be hating. Get a married couple's ahead. Single people like ah, ah. You'll be, you be there soon. 
Debbie, are you married? Stand up. All right, thank you. Now, if you don't know that you're married, amen. You better know, because if you're not sure, the devil will take it away from you. This is the foundation of ministry, the marriages. When you got marriages, amen, in the house of the Lord, and most of them are in leadership. Most of them are in leadership. This is amazing here. And the thing that is successful is the thing that the enemy is going to attack. That's right. Start praying more together. I know y'all like your own prayer times. Oh, the holies are holies. But spend, take some of that you time and spend it together. You got to pray more together. Because the attack is going to intensify. I'm just telling you that I know they want to preach you. It's going to get better one day. It's going to go back to normal. I'm here to tell y'all that's a lie. It ain't going back normal. I don't even want to go back. The Bible said if you look back, you're not even worthy of the kingdom. I ain't going back. What? Be encouraged. Stand, elder. Stand on your convictions. Stand on the word of God. Even when they don't want to hear it. You might say something that might not get one like, but as long as heaven is liking it, you okay. Stand. Don't let nothing come in between your marriage, not even ministry. Oh, man, I'm going to say that again. I don't want this kind of, see, pre pastors ain't going to tell you this kind of word because they want to be served. They, they want to be served. <laughs> I said, well, no, I can't tell them that because the wife won't. Bring. Sometimes we minister to the pastor quicker than we minister to our own husbands. If that happens, I'm going to rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I'm going to do it in love. I shouldn't get no more love than your husband. My wife shouldn't get no more love than your wife. <laughs> The enemy will use marriages to tear churches up. Love one another. It's going to get rough. And when it gets rough, they need to come home to a, 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 a home, an atmosphere that's going to build. That goes both of y'all. Build. Because the, the world going to tear them apart. The, 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 the alcoholic boss, the, the, the witches at the secretary, witches, they all, when you go to work, I want you to, because they know what kind of spirit you got. So they, and they can't help it. They're going to pull you down, tear you down. You got all the good stuff in you. Everybody loves you, especially when everybody loves you. They hate it. Tear you down. So when they come home, guess what? They got to come home to an atmosphere that's built. But husbands, you got to build it before you leave the atmosphere. Sometimes we don't want to speak to our wives and then at night we want to touch their nightgowns. We don't say nothing to them. We're out there, out there, and then want to come home and be lovey. No, you start loving as soon as you wake up. You turn the wheel. The, the wife has to be primed, not attacked. Wow, I ain't been really through all this teaching. Where's where all this coming from, Doc? You better teach. The wife is a well, and she needs to be primed. She's not a rape victim. Yeah, I'm going there. She's not a rape victim. She is the woman of God that God put in your life to help complete your ministry. <laughs> I walked in here and saw Mom Stephanie's face. I started getting mad. I started saying, what did Dick do to her? No, I didn't like that. Because I know Mom Stephanie is a no power person. But when I walked in here, I saw no power. <laughs> 
No. no I saw no power. <laughs> But then I saw the power of God come upon her when her husband did the right thing. Yeah. Tears begin to flow. Love begin to flow. Married couples do the right thing so love can continue to flow. Yeah. Don't come in here praising God more than you praise your spouse. Some people come in here and tear up the floor and go home and beat their wives. And people, I'm telling you, people chameleons. They up there preaching the word. Everybody saying go home. You know they go home. They beat the wives. And everybody saying, oh, he's a man of God. He's a woman. No, he's not. No, he's not. He got a tank top on with his hair out beating his wife. But you know what? God is not pleased. God is not pleased when your spiritual life is inconsistent with your marriage life. God's not pleased. And God will reveal it, the secret to his servant. And you will get exposed. So do right. Love each other. Look next to her. Give your husband and wife a kiss. Give him a kiss. Come on, go go to him. Go go to him. No, we're not gonna let. Don't let ministry go to her. Don't let ministry keep you from kissing your husband. See what I'm saying? Oh, I can't go because he's over there ministering. What? They better pump them lips up. Oh, I'm sorry. Watch your mouth. If my sister-in-law was here, she'd be wanting to throw up. <laughs> Come on, y'all sit down. Y'all in my word time. Amen. Give them a hand, everybody. Give these marriage couples a hand. I just felt like, I just felt like doing, I ain't going nowhere. No, Lord, I ain't, no, I ain't going nowhere. So I ain't going nowhere no time. Lord, no, I got a mission. And y'all keep praying. Somebody was heading straight for me the other day. They run right into my side, and, and my the, my car just stopped and just went through. He was coming fast. He was coming out of a driveway. I'm one of two lanes. This is, I'm in one lane. Here another way. He's in the driveway, so I'm I'm riding by. So I see him come out. So, oh, he's gonna come get next to me. You know, he came went right, hit, like almost hit me right in front of me. Oh, whoa. I slowed down. So, whoa. so I said, thank you, Lord. The saints are praying. Amen. Yeah. 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 But it can get to us. Amen. Y'all ready for this word? Yeah. I got a lot of information to give you today. Got a lot of information to give you. A lot of history. A lot of some things that you need to understand. We're going to deal with Bell's days today and some of his worships on today. Father, I ask that you would touch my mind. Uh, give me the words to, well, Lord, you gave me the words to say when you put this word together, but God, give me the spirit and how to say it, God. Touch my, my lips, Father God. Touch my, my wit, Lord God, so that my wit won't be off. God, so that my love meter won't be off. And God, that my judgment meter won't be off. Give me exactly a balance, Lord God, to reach somebody and compel them to come. Lord God, we honor you, we bless you. In Yeshua's name, amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just still glad to have my mother in my life, amen. And those of you whose moms is not with you, you know what I'm saying. Amen? Because some of you wish you still had yours. So as long as you have your mother, treat them right. Slow up. You slow up. Amen? So I just thank God, amen, for her. Amen? Still singing, still praising God. 
not making, not using the strokes for an excuse. Still praising God. My, my, <laughs> my father-in-law, you know, he getting up in that age. So he said, no, I'm not coming today because it's really cold out there. Deke was telling me that. I said, Deke, my mother wouldn't care if a meteor hit the city. Move that glowing rock over so I can sit down. My mother going to be in church. Um, see, World War II could be going on. You ain't preaching yet? Mom, they shooting at us. <laughs> My mother got that old school faith, amen? But I just thank God how loyal and faithful she is. And she won't say nothing, but she'll be hurting. Every bone of her body will be hurting, but, uh, but she still want to be in the house of the Lord. She hated to stay away when she had the sniffles. I had to make her stay away. But she loved the people of God that much. Amen. And she loved God's word. Give a hand for Elder Joyce Davis. All right. What? Understand this question. This is a very important question. You're going to need to understand this definition, people. Everything, everything that this whole definition I'm about to name is what's wrong with the whole entire system of Baal. I'm going to give you a definition. This definition is so important that they mess it up on purpose. You can't get the definition from the seminary schools because the seminary schools do not give you the correct definition when defining this thing. But today, y'all are blessed to get it without paying the tuition. Y'all ready for the question, what is the definition of sin? The whole church get it wrong. As soon as you graduate from the sun school and come out into the house of the Lord and somebody asks you to define it, they never go to the word of God to define it. They always go to their notes. This definition right here is what's wrong with the whole system of Baal. You ready to define it? You ready, Minister Anton? I, I did this from my memory. I hope I did it right. I didn't even Google it. I just thought it from my memory. First John 3 and 4. That's it. Minister Anton, get first John 3 and 4. Y'all, this is the definition of sin. Do not let nobody spin it. Do not let nobody try to fool you. For so long we didn't know the definition and it was in there the whole time but nobody ever went in there and showed us what it was the denominations aren't interested in this definition what is the definition of sin we get ready to define it right now well the holy the, the, the word of God is going to define it read sir Oh, turn this uh, mic on. Thank God for Brother Barry. He's being trained, amen, in the sound department, amen? Amen. Thank God. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. You know why the people want to get rid of the law? Because they want to get rid of their sin. No, no. Let me change that. It's because they want to hide their sin. <laughs> if you say that you sin, you are admitting that you broke the law. We don't need that law. Well, what did you do when you got saved? What did you ask God to forgive? 
Because if there is no law, then there is no sin. The Bible said where, there's, where there's no sin, there's no transgression. So are you telling me you don't? But they, they have to admit they can't say there's no sin. So this is what they did. Instead of them admitting sin, instead of them admitting that there was a law, they changed the definition of sin. You want to know one of the definitions that they gave us in seminary school? Missing the mark. Uh, what's that mean? You want to know? You want to know? You want to know what else they told us sin was? A coming short of the glory of God. Where are you getting these definitions from? Did you see how people would twist stuff when they don't want to admit that stuff is right? Coming short of the glory of God, missing the mark, are not definitions of sins. They are results of the sin. But the definition of sin is when you break God's law. The Bible says if you say you have no sin, you are a liar. So in other words, if you admit that you don't break God's law, you are lying. You are breaking it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't never forget that definition. They've been trying to get the law from us, but you're going to have to do something with sin. If the law is done away with, then you're going to have to you have to give me a reason why Jesus wasted his time on the cross. Because if you get rid of sin, then you might as well get rid of Jesus because he really, where is his job? You might as well get rid of the whole sacrificial system because they wasted their time if there is no sin. People, bail, is sin because it points to a law that's against God's law. So if we are celebrating, if we are worshiping, if we are keeping anything commanded by the sun God, this means that we are in violation of God's law and according to the definition, we are in sin. If you are worshiping, celebrating another law, you are in sin. When you worship and when you celebrate and when you keep another God's law and don't keep the most high's law, guess what? The most high God's law, guess what? You are in sin. Why? Because you are transgressing God's law. You cannot have both. You cannot please Bell and please God. You cannot please mammon and please God. Baal and Christ have no relationship. So why do you have one? If Christ have no relationship with Baal, then why in God's green earth are you spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to please another God? People that spiritual adultery. There's no way you could be in a relationship with God and as soon as he go to bed, you sleep, slip over to Sister Bell's house and start having relations with them. You are unfaithful. You are a whore. God says that we is jealous when we are in other God's faces. He said, I am a jealous God. Why do you ask me to wake you up in the morning and then turn around and have relations with an Easter egg God? What? Come on, Pastor. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But 
you got to understand if you are operating under another set of laws and you're not operating under God's laws, you're in violation. <sighs> Bell worship part six. Holiday. 1500s earlier, holiday from an old English, uh, ho uh, ho it's called Holy, Holy Day with an EY. Holiday con is a consecrated day, a religious anniversary. Amen. It is a, uh, it means a religious festival. This is holidays. A day of exemption from labor and recreation. We see that the word holiday is yet again a modern word that came around in the 1500s. It is a word with religious undertones. Prior to that, the Hebrew people never used the word holiday, but rather kadash, which means to be set apart. Why didn't the Hebrew people use that type of word? It's because they didn't have a religion. For them, living in truth and honoring God was a way of life and culture. Cults and false worship has always existed. But organized religion didn't come on the scene until 325 A.D. All this religion, all this denomination, all this stuff didn't was not so in the first century. It came on the scene when Emperor Constantine had a meeting and he established it. Bell worship part six. This is when Emperor of Rome Constantine decreed that all worship come together under or a band, hence the organized, uh, begin the organized pagan religion. Remember, it was their duty to get the pagans to come under with the believers of the time. So they, let, they wanted the pagans to come in, but the true believers did not operate in paganism. So they tried to figure out a way where the pagans could come in. Well, they found a way, and I'm about to name a few of them right now. Bell's Days. They figured out a way, y'all, to get the Christians and the pagans to become one under one banner. Easter. The Phoenicians called Samaritans Ishtar. The Hebrews recorded her name as Asherah. She has been known throughout the world by many other names for, for a few. Ostar, Eastar, E-O-S-T-R-E, Austrian, E-O-S-T, Austra, Astarith, Osterar, Artemis, Aphrodite, Tanit, Diana, Nana. Now you know where we get that from. Oh, my God. I'm going to tell you something. The scripture says that much learning is grievous. You know why it's grievous? Because the more you learn, the more you realize I have to unlearn. I looked at some stuff this week. I said, no, my ministry ain't ready for that. Because, man, it'll just, it'll make you, it'll make you, just, sometimes it'll just make you dread. I don't know, sometimes, but I believe that when it is ready, God will prepare your minds for it. But it's so much stuff out there that we had no clue about. But just, just to name a few, Circa, Venus, Isis, Frigga, Frey, Usher, Eos, Aurora, Stella. Aster, Nut, and others as Astart or Venus was said to have fallen from the earth in a huge egg. Egg stir. From the word Aster, 
Latin for the word stellar, Latin for the word star. Yes, the name Ishtar became Ashtaroth, then Easter, then Ostar, and it was a pagan spring observance brought into Christianity by Constantine at Nicaea in 325 CE. A Webster's Dictionary will tell you quite a lot about the word itself. This is, in fact, the personal name of Mystery Babylon, the Great Mother. Why is it the most celebrated observance? The answer, of course, is Constantine reinvented the meaning behind Easter in order to abandon Passover. See, they just didn't want. He also established the practice of the first day of the week, taking the Sabbath from the seventh day of week and transferring it to the first day of week. God, that was not uh, that wasn't by divine order. God never uh, ordered that. Man did that. They changed the scriptural day of rest. The Shabbat, which is the sign that we worship the true creator, he claimed the resurrection. Um, and what um, he claimed the resurrection for both, um, this is Constantine, he claimed the resurrection as the reason for both Easter and Sunday. And he got away with it. Study more at your leisure time. I'm going to give you just a little of each. But Easter, it is not biblical. It is not God's law. It has nothing to do with God's law. And if we sin, that means we're breaking God's law. And the wages of that is death. Christmas. Can I break down Bell's dates? This had nothing to do with the law of God, had nothing to do with the disciples, had nothing to do with the apostles. None of the apostles taught it. None of the disciples taught it. Nobody taught it as a day for us to keep. The origins of Christmas predated, predated way uh, before Christianity through the pagan holiday called Saturnalia. That's where it came from, y'all. Saturnalia was a pagan festival. This is where they got Christmas from. It was from December the 17th to the 25th that honored Saturn and included human sacrifice. Uh, it, it also included intoxication, naked caroling, sex, and rape. During these seven days, there was no punishment for breaking any of these laws according to Roman law. Isn't it very interesting that the movie Purge had 12 hours to complete their lawlessness? That's where that came from. And 12 is also the number of days originally for pagan tra tradition of Yuletide. In year 4 AD, um, they uh, adopted Saturnalia with the hopes that they could convert the pagans into Christianity by promising that they could celebrate Saturnalia. They told the pagans, listen, we'll let y'all keep Saturnalia. Just come on in. That's right. And they did it. They let them come on in and they did it by changing Saturnalia to Christmas. The Christians' the leaders decreed that the last day of Saturnalia to be the birth date of their false savior, Jesus. Jesus, the most high, Yeshua, was, was not the reason for the season. It was the other Jesus. It was the other Jesus. This is a historical fact. Because of the sexual perversion and the origins of Christmas, the Puritans banned the holiday between 1659 and 1681. Christmas was illegal in Massachusetts. Look it up. Christmas, a holiday on December the 25th celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, also called Christmas Day. Notice um, it Christmas is really Christ mass. Like, we don't have masses. Who have masses? 
it's time that we start asking questions and researching on your own. The etymology of Christmas stems from the old English word of Christmas C, again, which literally means Christ mass. Uh, let me see. At the death of Nimrod, the wife Samaris has taught the young Tammuz to go into the groves, that means the forest, and place a gift underneath the tree at the winter solstice. Um, this was an offering to his father Nimrod, who was his son. Remember the tie yellow ribbon around the old oak tree? That represents a prayer to the sun. At this point, branches of trees came to symbolize Nimrod. So decorating pagan temples and homes with hollies, bows, and wreaths was the customs of pagans, y'all. In ancient Babylon, the pagans began to worship a trinity of the father, son, um, mother earth, and the reborn son, who was interpreted also to be the father, coming back to life each winter solstice. The son was thought to be dying. Solstice means sun stop. That's what solstice means. Sun stop. They thought that the sun had died. But it was during the winter solstice. So it was... Um, so December the 25th was celebrated by pagans all over the world. It has been the birthday of Nimrod, Bel, Moloch, Dagon, Hercules, Atlas, Mithras, Krishna, Zeus, Osiris, Tammuz, Hermes, Indra, Buddha. All their um, dates were on December the 25th. Um, this evidence shows who is really lurking behind Christmas because there was a nativity of the sun already established before the manger, y'all. Um, no, uh, blah. Okay, I just want to, I got a lot of stuff here, but I don't, I don't need to bore you with all the details, but I just want to kind of, with your appetite to let you know. All right, let's take a look at some of these symbols that are connected to Christmas. Y'all ready? The Christmas tree. You can find that in Jeremiah 10, 2 through 4. The sacred of the tree of the winter God, the Druids believed the spirit of their God resided in the tree. Most ancient pagans knew the tree represented Nimrod reincarnated into Tammuz. Pagans also looked upon the tree as a phallic symbol. I'm not going to give you the details on that one. Number two, a star. You can look at that in Acts 7.43. A star is a five-pointed star. The pentalpha is a powerful symbol of Satan, second to only the hexagram. The star is the sacred symbol of Nimrod and had nothing to do with the Most High God. I remember somebody was trying to explain to us about the star. Well, you know, it was a star that led them to Jesus. Yes, that star was for navigational purposes, not worship purposes. Oh, <laughs> y'all think we dumb. Y'all think because y'all don't read the Bible, we don't read the Bible. Candles. Represents the sun god, newly born fire. Pagans the world over love use candles in their rituals and ceremony. Certain colors also thought to represent specific powers. Um, yes, the candles is used also in worship for the Lord, but I'm talking about when it's used for Christmas, all right? Um, it's very good indignation that the service is pagan regardless of the outward trapping. Mistletoe. It is a sacred plant of the Druids. It's symbolizing pagan blessings of fertility. Thus, kissing under the mistletoe is the first step in the reproductive cycle, y'all. Wow, wow, wow. Wreaths. Wreaths are associated with fertility and the circle of life. Being circular, they represent the female sexual organ. Right. Santa Claus. <laughs> the mythical attributes and power described to Santa is really cl almost close to the power that is that our most God, our most high God has. How in the world can He know what you're thinking? How can He know if you're good or bad unless there was a judgment? See, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to mess us up with that, y'all. 
Reindeers are horned animals representing the horn god, the stag god of pagan religion. Santa traditionally has a team of eight reindeers in satanic geomantic. Eight is the number of new beginnings of the cycle or the cycle of reincarnation. Elves are like imp creatures who are Santa's little helpers or Santa's demons. Green and red are the traditional color of the season as they are traditional pagan colors of winter. December the 25th was also known as the Romans as Saturnalia at the time of deliberate debauchery. Drinking uh, through repeating toast, toasting was a feature of the celebration. The mistletoe symbolized fornication and the entire event was finished with a great feast, the Christmas dinner. All right, let's go to the next one. Halloween. All from Baal. This is one uh, pagan holiday almost everyone knows know, and, and know is deeply rooted in evil and satanic paganism. Yet, the churches all over the globe could care less. Historical study and research proves over and over that Samhain, that was the pagan festival, that's where Halloween came from, y'all. Samhain or Sowain, the name changed over the years to Halloween, is as pagan and satanic as it gets. Families take trips to a haunted house, to Disneyland themed Halloween Park, to creepy corn mazes, and churches truck or treat celebrations or truck or treat celebrations all in the name of fun. What good is it to compromise the truth and obedience to God's word to take part in satanic sin for a season? For those who love the creator with all your heart are living the set apart life. Let us proudly declare that the world that we will not commit spiritual adultery against God. Amen? Amen. Um... Historical research proved on Halloween that even Satanists celebrate the birth of Satan, in, in which Hebrew it means adversary. Sadly, on this weekend evening, uh, Christian families around the world invite the spirit of Satan in their cities, their neighborhoods, their pagan parties with their friends and strangers in their front lawns, their front doors, in their homes, and even the children and themselves. The children dress up um, along with the adults because they love the lie. For this sadistic day uh, to be someone they unknowingly really are, each year on Halloween, people spend hundreds of dollars to create elaborate decorations for this wicked celebration. Not only to outdo their neighbors, for outdo their neighbors and uh, and in their in themselves. Uh, in Encyclopedia Britannica, 1917 says Halloween is a holiday observed on October the 31st, the evening before All Saints Day or All Hallows Day, which is another pagan lie that they made Christian, but had nothing to do with Christ. Celebration marks the day um, before the Western pagan feast of All Saints Day. Um, in Europe and most of North America, observing Halloween is largely now religious. Halloween had its origins in the festival of Samhain among the Celts of ancient Britain and Ireland. Right. Some of the events, and listen to this, some of the events and before Halloween include child and adult kidnapping, sadistic sacrifices of adults, children, animal sacrifices, dogs and cats go missing around this time of the year. I told you when I went to the SPCA, they told me they locked the black cats up because people would come and adopt them just to kill them. That's what the lady told me at the SPCA. Um, in addition, Halloween perpetrates an identity crisis in both children and adults, which is the goal of Halloween, according to uh, ex Satanist. Halloween further opens up the door for spiritual possessions and include activities at the express purpose of conjuring up spirits. Witches and Satanists are in full event. Wiccans even curse the candy at the stores, which will then be purchased and given out on, on, that, on the satanic day leading up to in Halloween. Halloween esteems death. Halloween is the celebration of death, y'all. Um, family Harvest Festival, Hallelujah Night, Trunk or Treat is the way that today's churches try to put new wine in old, tainted, corrupted wine sets. The level of compromise from pastors and the flock that sits under them in these modern day churches is shameful and it's pitiful. Churches and pastors will tell you that taking part in pagan holidays is, is cheating on um, Satan and that the creator hates it. Why? Why won't the pastor tell you it's wrong? Because pastors are more concerned about getting butts in the seats 
big holidays event draw big crowds. Never in scripture do we read where ancient Hebrews and the 12 took part in any pagan tradition. And when they did, death always followed. Okay. Uh, write these scriptures down. Deuteronomy 12, 3 and 4. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Deuteronomy 12, 31. Revelations 22, 18 to 19. Get that for me, Minister Anton. Guys, when we keep these things, what we're doing, we're adding to God's word. When our churches are keeping these uh, festivals that are not biblical, we're adding them and saying they're biblical. We're, we're making Christmas biblical. And it's not. The Bible speaks against this kind of worship. In Jesus' day, it wasn't called Christmas. It was called the winter solstice. It was a festival that they kept. And then later on, they changed it to Christmas. The Roman Catholic Church changed it to Christmas. You're going to see the Roman Catholic hand in a lot of these uh, festivals that we talk about today. Y'all not getting bored. Y'all getting this right? What does God say by adding to his word? Read, sir. Revelation chapter 22, beginning at verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. <laughs> Verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. When y'all keep these days, guys, you are messing with your name. Come on now. Come on, sir. No way to put it. But the Lord knows my heart. He knows that when I'm keeping them, I'm just keeping them from him. You know, yes, he does know your heart. But the question you should be asking, what do he see? <laughs> I don't care how sincere you are about doing something. It does not change the etymology of that thing. It does not change the origin of it. You can't change the origin of something because you really got a good heart. I understand some of the new members didn't do it this year. I didn't expect the new members. The new members, I didn't expect them. I expect them for them to take a while for them to do it. But I heard they did it. Amen. That means that knowledge is increasing and Jesus is soon to come so much so the new people got to get it because Jesus is soon to come and he don't want them to be lost. The Bible says he cut the work short and he's going to end it in righteousness. Hallelujah. All right, let's deal with another one. Valentine's Day. Bell. St. Valentine is what remains of Lupercalia. That is the feast, the pagan feast where they got Valentine's Day from. You notice all these pagan feasts starts off as pagan before we change it. They all are, and you can always trace the roots. It's, uh, it, and those of you Y'all might be sad because I talked about Christmas and stuff. Get toys before the 25th. Amen. They still there. Get the toys, y'all. They there. I, I'm serious. Get, bless your children before that day. Bless them. We had started doing that when our kids was little. And we, we would bless them before Christmas, and we say, this is Children's Day. No, we didn't change the 25th. We changed October. <laughs> to, <laughs> we changed it to September or whatever. So that we won't be um, identified with, with that. And those of you that got two parent homes where different parents are somewhere else, just pray. Yes. You know, pray. Just pray that they'll come into the truth. But when you have your child, put all that truth in them as much as you can. St. Valentine's Day is the Feast of Lupercalia. You can look it up. Google it later. An early spring purification rites, which the priests would run through the streets with whips made from the strips uh, stri of goatskin. With these whips, they would strike women and showing them a fertility uh, for the coming year. Matchmaking between young people could occur later in that day by random selection of names. 
So they would select these names. These people would just go have sex. They'd be all out in the street. It was just a mess. Amen. I understand they would line up and wait for the priest to hit them. You ever play catch a girl, get a girl, and the ugly girl's always still there for you to catch them? How many of you remember that? The pretty girls would be, they would be out. But the early, ugly girls were like, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, run, run, nigga. I'm just, <laughs> run. <laughs> so they had women lining up in the streets waiting to get hit by the, uh, uh, by the whip of animals that they sacrificed earlier that day for this festival, y'all. This was a bad festival. Young boys would then take stripes uh, of hide and from sacrificed animals, and they would whip the young women as well. And the men would whip the men so the men can have sex with the men as well, y'all. This is what was going on in Lupercalia. The heart symbol of Valentine's Day is actually... Oh, y'all, don't be mad with me. The heart symbol is a symbol for Nimrod. The Romans acquired the heart symbol from the Babylonians who spoke to the Shal to spoke in Chaldean tongue. In this language, the word heart was B-A-L or B-E-L. Due to its similarity in sound to bell, it became an emblem for Nimrod. Valentine's was named after a Roman Catholic whose name was Valentini because he was like the saint of love and marriages. But because of the eroticism and the lewd sex that was connected to uh, Caprinellier um, at that time, the Pope at that time made a switch. So during the 5th century, Pope uh, Genesius declared February the 14th to be a holy day in honor of St. Valentini. Instead of this pagan god who was responsible for, um, it was the, the, the pagan god that was responsible for Valentine's Day, his name was Lupercus, who was responsible for Lupercalia. Just Google it. Again, the Catholic Church takes a pagan day and give it a Christian name. Y'all ready for another one? Y'all ready to stop? Because y'all want y'all black eyed peas and cornbread. I probably won't never get an offering after this. I'm going to give myself my own. I'm going to give myself an offering. Amen. <laughs> New Year's Day. The beginning of the year was dedicated to a very peculiar God by the name of Janus. According to mythology, Janus was the two-faced God. That two-faced means deception. Remember that. Y'all going to need it because I'm about to reveal something to y'all today that shocked me sitting on my couch this morning. God told me to ask Google a few things. Watch this. I'm telling you. So, yeah, you can't, yeah, but he told me to ask Google this one. And it was backed up with history. But it was a, there was a something, yeah, because they'll use Google to outlaw the Sabbath. They, they'll use it. You know, it depends on who's using it. If you got a, if you got a right, if you got a perverted mind, you can mess up anything. You can mess up church <laughs> with a perverted mind. Janus comes from um, the word door in Latin, beginning in passages. That is why the first month of the year, January, was named after him. On New Year's Day, the Romans would go on a procession to the top of Capitol Line Hill, where the priest would sacrifice a white bull to ask for protection for the gods from the new year. I saw something. God, let me see something. I got three questions. Two-Face represents deception, right? How many of you was old enough to remember this? Man, you two-faced it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I'm about to show y'all a Janice ritual that was done under our noses last year. Probably didn't think nothing of it. I didn't think nothing of it. I wasn't coming to teach this, but God sat me down, and I had four questions that I was going to ignore, but God says, no, find the answer for those questions. You're going to see something. Now, like, sometimes when I study, I dig up stuff, but this one I wasn't looking for at all. Let's go back and reread something. January was named after him, and on New Year's Day, the Romans will go on to procession to the top of the capital, Lion Hill. The first question I'm asking is, I asked Google this, what was the month of the U.S. Capitol attack in Washington, D.C. last year? Guess what the month was? I said, all right, God, that's just a coincidence. It might not mean nothing. I need y'all to hear this. It might not mean nothing. Then he kept asking me another one. Let's go back up in here. Capital Line Hill. So I said, well, no, that's probably just a coincidence. There's no way. So the second question I asked, just to make sure that my curiosity was wrong, or I just wanted to keep moving. I wanted to finish studying something else. I asked Google this. Does the U.S. Capitol sit on a hill? The U.S. Capitol was built atop of Jenkins Hill, now often referred to as Capitol Hill, in 1793. Since then, many additional buildings have been constructed around the site to serve Congress and the Supreme Court. Got the Capitol. You got the hill. What about the bull? Nah, there's no way it had nothing to do with no bull. There wasn't no bull there during those riots. Well, in February 9th, 2021, ABC wrote an article in Phoenix, a Arizona man who participated in the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol while sporting face paint, had no shirt on, y'all remember him, had a furry hat on with bull horns, said he regrets storing the building, apologized for causing fears, and expressed his appointment with the former president. Captain? Capitol? We established the hill? We established the bull? <sighs> Let me go back up and read this. Where the priest would sacrifice a white bull. Uh, we got that. We got the Capitol Hill part. Where the priests uh, were asked for protection. We we got the white bull part from the from the gods for the new year. Somebody say new. new. Now, this is going to be the saddest question of them all. I'm praying for the family of these people that were innocent. Probably didn't know what hit them. But nevertheless, I'm establishing a ritual here, y'all, that happened right in our faces. Google, how many people died that day when the U.S. Capitol was stormed? Google, Google, this is how many people they said died that day. They said it was five during the, during the riot. According to numerology, what does number five represent? The number five represents a desire to have adventurous and explore, wait for it, new possibilities. It signifies the change and the high energy and excitement. Romans celebrated often sacrifices, their human sacrifices. They changed his gift for one another. They de decorated their homes, with, and, they, and they had branches, and they attended raucous parties that was high energy and exciting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Folks, what happened at the Capitol was a Janus ritual. I just showed you a Janice ritual that happened right in our face. It wasn't by surprise. This was planned. They called it a terror attack. 
but it was a planned ritual. It lined up the evidence of a ritual. The devil don't care who dies. Everybody dies in, in sacrifices. And sacrifices are always offered to Satan during the winter solstice. This is where the people die. This is where the people are sacrificed. You don't have to believe it. Amen. I, I lined it all up. See, these people love their gods so much, so they will worship their gods in front of our faces and don't care what you say. This is why they want to keep you quiet about the holy days and make you excited about the holidays. This is why they don't want you to know who you are, that everybody else knows who we are but us. All the, all the cultures know who we are. Everybody want our rhythm, but nobody want our blues. They all want to be like us. They know who we are, but as long as they can keep bell in front of our faces, we can't see the truth. They got us worshiping these holidays because they know the holy days point back to the most high and points to us so that we will know who we are in a better sense. The more we understand God's holy days, the more we're going to understand who we are. That's right. Can we do one more? Lent. I did an inherited lie on that. On teaching. I did, I did an inherited lie on that. Because I saw too many believers walking around with cigarette ashes on their head. Who's that? Charcoal? Who's that? Velvet? Lent is the 40th day before Easter, and it is observed in many Christian denominations. This is a six-and-a-half-week period that lasts from Ash Wednesday to the pagan Easter Sunday. During Lent, Christians fast and refrain from various pleasures. This is said to be for the purpose of preparing to commemorate the passion, death, and the resurrection of Christ. People, the Bible does not teach that we are to fast to prepare the Bible teaches that we are to fast to prepare to face God, not to fast to face paganism. Luke 23, 26, and 27. Minister Anton, get that. Why he getting that? The pagan origin of Lent, uh, it, 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 it originated in ancient Babylon, mystery religion among the pagans. Lent seemed to have a, a indispensable preliminary to great annual festivals and a commemoration of the death of Tammuz. Go ahead, uh, Minister Anton, read that for me. Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse 26. And as they led him away, they laid hold. I'm sorry, is that Leviticus 23? Le Leviticus, did, I'm sorry, did I say something else? My bad. I'm sorry. Yes, sir, please. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 23 beginning at verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So when the Lord tells us to fast, it is to fast to prepare to face him, not Lent where they're fasting to face paganism. It's a difference. Lent, like I said, originated in Babylon. Um, okay, so the apostles never taught it. Christ never instituted it. So where did it come from? Somebody say Shrove Tuesday. Or Mardi Gras, as it is commonly known, literally means Fat Tuesdays. In French, it is called Pancake Tuesday. Um, in England, and it is associated with the Roman Catholic custom of Lent. The idea behind Mardi Gras, that's pagan, y'all. Let me just get that out the way. That's pagan. Button up your blouse. Don't show your breasts. We're not giving out no beads. <laughs> Nobody getting no beads today. You getting truth, amen? The idea behind Mardi Gras or a carnival celebration is that the people overindulge before giving up something for Lent, which begins follow that following day with Ash Wednesday. Lent is the 40 weekdays from Ash Wednesday to Easter that's observed 
all right? Lent was a time of penance, of fasting, of abstinence. Folks abstained from all sorts of good stuff. Meat, they also gave up eggs and dairy products. So on Tuesday, the day before the start of Lent, fast, folks cleared out their cupboards, all the food that they could not have for the next 40 days. They cooked them up and ate like pigs. From Ash Wednesday to Easter, many solemn marked their foreheads with ash, fasting, or why would God tell you to mark your forehead if fasting is a secret between you and God? This is done supposedly to imitate the Messiah's 40-day fast in the wilderness. The devil is a liar. Some people give up smoking, chewing gum. People vow to give up anything as long as it prepares them for Easter. What is the purpose of Lent? The purpose of Lent, above all, is to prepare men for the celebration of the death of the resurrection. Oh, this is from, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia. This is where I got this information from right here. The real aim of Lent is, above all else, to prepare men for the celebration of death and resurrection of Christ. The better preparation, the more effective the celebration would be. Okay, uh, the purpose of Lent is to provide purification by weaning men from sin and selfishness through self-denial and prayer by creating in them a desire to do God's will, to make his kingdom come by making it come first of all in their hearts. So on the surface, it seems like it's a sincere belief. However, it does not agree with the Bible. It sounds good, but all deception has to sound good. Or well, we wouldn't even want it, right? Before I can religiously, religiously deceive you, I first, must, I first must sound and look religious to appeal to you. Amen? Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11, 12 through 14. Second, what did I say? Second Corinthians chapter 11. Yeah, verse 12 through 14. Starting at verse 12. Listen. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves and to the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. God already prepared us a purification system. You don't need to put uh, charcoal on in your, in your forehead for it to happen. This is God's purification system. Go to Hebrews 13, 12, and, uh, Hebrews 13 and 12. Hebrews Chapter 13, verse 12. Read 12 and 13. Beginning at verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, Whew. suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. So how does God purify us? By his blood. What else did God use to purify us? I'm trying to tell you. Because I saw this being taught in the churches. I was in my, putting something together one day. And I seen all these people put up a truck board. We got to keep Lent. And I'm like, Lent? Like these people keeping Advent this, like last year. They was keeping the Advent. I'm like, what is this? And, and, and I saw it. And I was like, Lord, is this, is this, is this for your people? And then when I saw it, I got mad and I put a heritage lie together just so that we won't be deceived. You need to thank God that you got a place where people are not, where you got a, a leader that wants to make sure that y'all don't get deceived. Just because you put music behind it and, it, and all that doesn't mean, it, that's, the, that's the cap up. Most people, they got to have something else going on besides just, just the word. They got to have something else going on to keep their minds. Like I heard one pastor say, well, like I was losing the people, so he put the click beat on. Why was you losing the people? You ain't got no word. 
You only can do but you only can do pony tricks so long. You only can do like I want my soul to be fed. Amen, Sister Angie. Like you can only you can only keep me mesmerized but for so long. But if I'm not getting fed, so we are purified by his blood. What else are we purified? Let's go to Acts 15 and 9. What else are we purified by? Acts chapter 15, verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So not only are we purified by the blood, but we are purified by faith. I ain't seen not one ash yet. All right, and uh, what else are we purified or sanctified by? Let's go to First Timothy 4 and 5. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What else are we sanctified? We are sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Obedience of faith, the word of God and prayer. There's already a purification system already set up, Rome. We don't need to put no ash on our head to be purified. So why are the leaders of the church teaching this? Because they don't like God's law anyway. So anything that sounds cute, they probably thought it was be make them look deep. It didn't make them mean. I said, they dummies. You don't preach that kind of stuff and lead the people wrong. So um, Lent was never observed by the Messiah or his apostles. Amen. Uh, let me see. <laughs> we got. All right, let's take a look at something that that Bell is one. one we're only gonna do one. Let's take a look at yoga, because a lot of people of God love their kind of love this kind. They got services in church, yoga ministry Wednesday night six o'clock. Bring your mat. Bring your mat. Some of you, some of you better look at some of these exercise programs that you in. Did y'all know Bell had workout programs? Let's take a look at yoga. What is yoga? Yoga is the worship of the sun. It is Hinduism. The worship of many gods. Sun worship is always condemned. Write this down. Ezekiel eight sixteen. Second Kings 23 and 5. Yoga is very polytheistic. The Hindus worship over a million gods. They worship over, I'm not going to hold you. I have a problem. Look, I have a hard time just worshiping one. How could you worship a million? So, so it's, um, it's, it's, it, it worship over a million gods. So my question is, are we supposed to be involved in the worship of more than one God? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse four. I'm almost done. Hey Amen. I'm, I'm. I'm seriously. I'm, this is prop. This is it. This is going to be the last one. Deuteronomy chapter six and verse four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. In yoga, they do a lot of poses described as a tribute to the creation, but the Bible clearly says that we're only supposed to worship one Creator. But pastor, isn't yoga only exercise? It may be true that the positions, they call that asinus, the positions, or even perhaps the breathing, they call that prana, pranayama, can have health benefits. But the ultimate goal in yoga is something more sinister. Very few Western yoga teachers actually touch upon this aspect of yoga, but according to the ancient text, it is indeed the main aim. The asanas and the pranayama really intend to produce an awakening, what is known as a kundalini power, which is taught as being a snake coiled around the base of the spine. When the serpent is in, when it wakes up, it will then move up through your body, through the chakras, the so-called life force center, and only reaches the crown or the top of the head. It will explode into the so-called thousand patel lotus, 
One of the members came to me and told me she tried it and she had a battle getting out of it. She told me, she said, Pastor, because I, I preached this last year, she said, ah, that thing had me. She couldn't even breathe. She didn't know what was going on. She didn't have control of herself. She said, she just called on Jesus. Now she's going she to call on Jesus after calling on Condoleezza. That's what she get. I told her that too. She laughed. But she free. Am I lying, Debbie? Am I lying? I see y'all thought I was making it up. She don't mind me telling her. She, because she, because look, she tried it. And quiet as it's kept. Some of us didn't try it, but we sitting here quiet like we little you lamps. Yeah, they got it all in the schools and all kinds of stuff. I remember Bruce McCall came um, and told, was it, one of the kids came and told me they had that in their curriculum. Yoga. Take that, the teacher was making them meditate and transcending. What that got to do with ABCs? In schools. Are you serious? And guess what? Soon as the Kundalini power would have came up, they would have called, you got to come get your child. They sick. You got to come take them to the hospital. And give them and give them drugs for it. For okay, that's what happened. But the churches are teaching this, y'all. The churches are doing it. Nobody see anything wrong with that. Why do we like to do things that we can't even see in the Bible, but ignore the things we can see? They argue with us about the law, the feast days, but y'all keeping Kundalini. Some people say, well, the Bible does talk about meditation. That's true. But when you study all the passages, you will discover that there is no recommendation to search within your heart for truth. Rather, you see an emphasis on meditating on Psalms 1, 2. Get Psalms 1 and 2. I'm going to get these, these scriptures. This is what God told us to meditate on. So if y'all want to meditate, go get you a mat. You can meditate on God's word. Why I get you a mat and get in the lotus position? <laughs> right. We, sir, what are we supposed to be meditating on? First Psalm, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yeah, God says we're supposed to meditate, but what are we supposed to be meditating on? We're supposed to be meditating on this law. The problem is we got away from this law and we got a snake in our spine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what else are we supposed to be meditating on, Sister Jelena? Get Psalm 77, verse 12. Yeah, we're supposed to meditate, but I'm going to show you what we're supposed to be meditating on. Put your max away. Jesus. 77th Psalm, verse 12. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doing. What else are we going to be meditating on? The works of God. You know what they was doing Friday at the pantry? They was meditating on the work of God. They was getting the thing up. They was laughing. Did you get a Kundalini spirit? No, you didn't know it. Y'all was talking. Y'all had fun. Y'all was meditating on God's work. So if you're going to meditate on it, meditate on what the Bible says meditate on. Can I do another meditation? For the people out there, they say, oh, you can meditate. Philippians 4 and 8, Lord God. My Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Come on. Whatsoever things are honest. Listen. Whatsoever things are just. Listen, Marcus. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of 
good report. Come on! If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things we are supposed to be meditating on. He says, if there be any virtue. That means you don't need one of them things over your eyes for virtue reality. He told you what to think on. Come on, y'all. If you want virtue. Listen, when we seek, when we seek some kind of emotional or sensual meaning on our focus and focus on our senses, the exp experience with God in order to feel his presence as a way to confirm truth, we are staring down a pathway that eventually will lead us away from God. We are even at risk when we allow another human to guide our meditation. This is not the example that Jesus has set for us. God does not leave it up to us on how he should be worshipped, how he should be praised, how he should be reverenced or celebrated. He puts it in scripture and we obey. Play something soft. God don't care nothing about what I just do because I don't do it because of that reason. Well, don't do it at all because this is the reason you're doing it. What other reason is there? What other reason is there? Well, give me another reason for keeping Halloween. Well, I keep it as an honor to. No, you can't keep it because it don't mean that. Why you keep it? And let me tell you something. Don't. Lord have mercy. Y'all just don't know half of this stuff. Not only did Rome mess up, deceive us with doctrines, but they messed the times up, y'all. They messing with the clocks. Our whole, our, whole, our whole system of time has been totally hijacked. We got people thinking that the day starts at 12 or 1 midnight when the Bible said the day starts in the evening. That's right. But the Bible says in Daniel 7.25, they change times. They think they change times and law. They don't mess with our laws. God's laws. They don't mess with God's time. Rome didn't did a doozy on us. So it's going to be hard when we preach to try to tell people to come out of Babylon. It's going to be a battle. So like you're scared to say so. You can't be scared because you have to be strong. You're going to have to be strong when you tell your family, I can't do that. You're going to have to be strong. Y'all right. right. think this is a weak gospel? It's not a weak gospel. This is, man, remnant, man, we're going to have so many scars and so many muscles. It's going to be crazy because we're going to go through a lot of battles. What I'm teaching right now, it seems like it's easy what I'm teaching, but it's not. People are bound. They don't put the chains on us physical anymore. The chains is in our minds. They condition. We are conditioned with tradition. We are conditioned with tradition. Since we came off the boat, they've been conditioning us. This is the way you worship. This is the way you celebrate. This is the way you... This is even the system of education is a Babylonian system. That is not our system. If it was our system, they would teach our history. But they don't teach our history. They teach his story. Their story. If it was our system, we would know who we was in the schools, but they don't want us to know who we are. That's right. That's right. I don't want that. They would kill me. <laughs> I start cutting all kinds of programs. I'll be cut long and no, you don't know who you are. Cut the program. You uh, put your dress back on. Cut the programs. I'll be, I'll be cutting all kinds of stuff. I'll kick the people out of Israel and put the right ones in there. Y'all, come on. Get some planes. Y'all going on over there. These Negroes out of here. But this is not our world. This is not, this system belongs to Satan. 
And God did not take us out of this world. He said, keep them in there. Amen. Wouldn't have been just nice if he just took us out. We wouldn't have to worry about this stuff. No. But you, if you're going to be ruined, it's because you're going to choose to be it. You're going to choose to not touch the stuff. You're going to choose to not be over there. You're going to choose to not be with that. You're going to choose to not worship that. It's going to have to be a choice. Stand on your feet. What I did wasn't a whole bunch of words, but I just wanted to give y'all some of the things that the churches are keeping. Watch this. It wasn't a whole bunch of words, but yet the churches are keeping this. Without word. But you say, but no, that ain't what God told us to keep. Here, God told us to keep this, and this is where it's found. Ah, 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 ah. They don't want to see that because they're conditioned by tradition. Their conditioning is not going to let them see that God's word is true. Y'all, we are nothing special about us, but God woke us up. You blessed, man, because you're blessed to know that you don't have to. You're not instant. Like, God didn't let you get deceived that way. Like, as much as mess we did, we don't even deserve not to be deceived. But God loves you so much that he brought you out. Since he brought you out of the garb to into the truth. We're not Arabs. We're Hebrews. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, 68, the ones that got on the ship were the true Jews. Did our ancestors get on them ships? Did they get sold? Did they get raped? Well, guess what? That's us. The 12. The black, the brown people, and there are other ethnic groups that makes up the 12 tribes, y'all. The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the 10 of them was lost. The other two wasn't. But the, we're scattered, and we don't know who we are. So when we get up and set up a platform like this, when Elder get up and set up a platform on Facebook and different things, we got we to gotta not just fight the world. We got to fight the church. The world will accept it more before the church will. Because of the conditioning, unless God give you, unless God open up and bust through that tradition, you will always be lost. But thank God, God says He's gonna call him out of Babylon. God's gonna call him out. He's gonna get through that conditioning. Hallelujah. The only ones that's gonna fight con your conditioning is the leaders, because they was a part of helping you be put in conditioning. They put preachers on the payroll to come into church to deceivably deceive the people. Everybody that started telling black people who they were, they killed them. Either they killed them or they paid them off and they had to compromise. Martin, Martin started telling us we, who he was. They got rid of him. As long as we was marching for buses and sitting at the counters, everything was fine. But when he started telling them about the 40 acres of the mill and what they owe us and all this stuff, they got rid of him. I saw a quote from George Washington that just shook me to my core. Saw it on his page. And I sent it to y'all, didn't I? We got that on the phone. Can I say that to y'all real quick? Can I show you this quote? Because y'all be thinking we be lying sometimes. Oh, no, no, we are. No, I don't, they don't care who we are. Huh. huh. Yes, they do. They spent billions of dollars to hide the fact who we were. They changed all the artifacts and all kinds of stuff to make it not look like us. I remember somebody got up, had a nerve to say Cleopatra was white. I laughed. Listen at this speech. Make it a little bigger. I got you know, diabetes, doc. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Diabetics, you know, we can't. All right, there you go. There you go. I ain't claiming that either. God will heal me from that. Thank you for prayer. George Washington, the chairman of the Continental Congress of 1774, two years before y'all got y'all barbecue grills out. And that was mess. 
chairman of the Continental Congress of 1774 is documented saying, this is George Washington, this is your president. If we would agree to take the feathers and turbans of the Moors, the black people, take them off the Moors' heads and remove their sandals from their feet and enforce it with severe punishment and also wear a death oath between ourselves to religiously and faithfully not allow anyone to teach the Moorish children whom they really are or who their forefathers were and allow the Moorish children to be taught that they were truly Negroes, black people, and color folk. George Washington stated that 200 years from the day that the Moorish people would not know their nationality nor the nationality name of their forefather. Also, they would not know from which land or ancestors they descended from. They were willing to make a death oath so that we would know why would you hide the fact of who we were? What are you afraid of? If we knew who we were, we would take the money from them. We would take everything from them. That's how smart the people are. But we got a mind to kill each other, not come together. So they supplying the guns and we kill them one another. They supplying the drugs and we kill them one another for it. Ain't no black people got ships of ammunition coming into the hood. We know who doing that. And then they get on the news and start counting 555, 556, 556. It is a joke. Why are you not counting cancer patients? Why are you not counting other stuff? Why are you counting dead Hebrew people on the it's a it's all a setup, y'all? Yeah. Wake up! But the problem is they don't want this to be taught in churches, they just want us to shout. And play their music for them while they wake up all the offering. We need to wake up. God says he's going to take their offering and give it to us. That's the word. If we come together and do right and obey his word. The reason why we in this mess because we stop obeying his word. But God says he's coming back to get us. My God. Well, we got another opportunity, another chance. And we might see some other folks of colors up there. But guess what? Whosoever will, let them come. And if they come, they got to come into the original tree, not coming with their bell worship. That was the problem. They were supposed to came in at the original tree. They were not supposed to come in with their laws. Laws were already set. They wasn't supposed to come in with their worship. Worship was already set. They wasn't coming, supposed to come in with their days. Their days were already set. But now here we are, and the church is doing everything, doing the same thing that got us in slavery. That's what the church is doing. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As long as I got breath, as long as you got breath, we got to keep this thing going. We got to tell people the truth and get folks delivered. Praise God. Anybody need to be saved? You don't know the Lord, but you want to get saved. I, I wasn't saved, but I need, I want God to come back in my life. I don't really know God like that, but I want to get to know him today. Let me see your hand up. That's you. Hey, I backslid. I want to come back. I backslid. I messed up. I want to come back. Anybody feel like that today? Hallelujah. All right, well, good. We can pray. Stay at your seats. Father, we thank you for the... The word today, Lord God, I, I pray, Lord God, that someone was inspired, someone was informed and, and, and educated today. God, I thank you for your word. Lord, just put strength in our hearts, Lord God. Sometimes when it gets a little lonely, Lord God, and we get a little fearful, God, put the put the, your courage back in us, Lord God. Let, 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 let us know that you are with us, Lord God. Lord God, it seems like that the whole world is wandering after the beast, but God, there are a few people, Lord God, that are still standing on your word. Let us link up with those people, Lord God. Let us encourage those people, Lord God, and as they encourage us. God, we thank you for these things. 
So, Lord, I ask that you would touch each and every person here. Touch their mind, Lord God, because next week the enemy is going to try a new set of tricks. So, God, prepare us for the new set of tricks starting tomorrow. Lord, keep our minds covered so we will, that we can wake up every morning and still thank you for what you have done. We honor you. We bless you. In Yeshua's name, we pray. Everybody say amen. Come on, clap your hands.